Hello students! Congratulations! We are done with all the topics for our bridging program. For today's video, we will start with our first topic in Grade 9 Biology, the Circulatory System. To start our lesson, let's define first Circulatory System. Circulatory System, it is a fluid-filled network of tubes through which materials move between the environment and the cells of a multicellular organism. But why is circulatory system important? Let's enumerate and discuss the functions of the circulatory system in order for us to know its importance. First is for transportation. It transport gases, nutrients, hormones to our body, and it also eliminates waste products. Second is for regulation. It regulates and sustains the body temperature, pressure, and acidity to maintain our body in homeostasis. And lastly, it is for protection. It helps us in fighting foreign substances that gets inside our body, and it also heals our wounds through blood clotting. What are the major parts of the circulatory system that enables the different functions to work? Heart continuously pumps and circulated the blood all throughout the body using the blood vessels as the transport system arteries that carries oxygenated blood away from the heart, and veins that carries the oxygenated blood back to the heart, and blood that carries oxygen and nutrients to be delivered to the rest of the body, and waste products to be eliminated. Let's continue with the major organ of the circulatory system. What are the parts of the human heart? Superior vena cava and inferior vena cava are blood vessels that provides as the entrance of the oxygenated blood towards the heart, and it is received by the right atria, then passed to the tricuspid bulb, to the right ventricle, then to the pulmonary arteries, going to the lungs to be oxygenated again. Then, will return to the heart using the pulmonary veins. It will be received by the left atria, passing the mitral bulb, then left ventricle. The oxygenated blood will now be delivered to the rest of the body through the aorta. The detailed blood circulation will be discussed on our next video. The heart is composed of strong cardiac muscle tissues that continuously contract and relax to pump blood all throughout the body. In fact, cardiac muscle is only found in the heart and makes up the bulk of the heart's mass. The heart beats powerfully and continuously throughout an entire lifetime without any rest. So, cardiac muscle has evolved to have incredibly high contractile strength and endurance. It has four major chambers, two atria and two ventricles. These chambers highly coordinate in pumping blood that must deliver oxygen to the tissues and take carbon dioxide for disposal. Let's proceed to the second part of the circulatory system. What are the different types of blood vessels? Arteries deliver oxygen-rich blood to the cells, away from the heart. As arteries penetrate the organs, they decrease in diameter and become arterioles, veins, that turn oxygen-poor blood from the cells back to the heart. As the veins go inward the organs, they decrease in diameter and become venules. Capillaries are small blood vessels that connect arteries and veins. These can penetrate the inner portion of different organs and facilitate the transfer of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and dissolved substances in and out of your blood. Your blood vessels could circle the globe. Though blood vessels are relatively small, the network is amazingly long. In fact, if they were laid out in a line, they would measure more than 60,000 miles in length. Continue, let's discuss the last part of circulatory system, 
the blood. The blood of an average person has 4 to 6 liters of blood. Blood is responsible for transporting materials and for immune defense. The major components of blood can be divided into the extracellular fluid and the formed elements. Extracellular fluid Plasma is the fluid part of the blood. It holds the blood cells in suspension and makes up 55% of the blood's volume. While the formed elements, the red blood cells, it is the most abundant cells in the blood. Nearly 40% of the blood's volume is red blood cells. Globin is an iron-containing protein in RBC. It is the one responsible for attracting the oxygen that is available in our lungs. When hemoglobin is loaded with oxygen, it can be referred to as oxyhemoglobin. It is characterized by a bright red color. The oxyhemoglobin is the form of hemoglobin without oxygen that is purple to bluish in color. Another form element is the white blood cells. Immunity cells involved in protecting the body against infectious agents and foreign bodies. What are the types of white blood cells? First, we have neutrophils. It responds to bacterial and fungal infections. Second, basophils. It aids in allergic reaction. Third, eosinophils help in controlling parasitic infection and allergic reaction. Lymphocytes are for viral infection and adaptive immunity, while the last one, which is the monocytes, are for chronic infections and part of the innate immunity. And the last form element is the platelets. It is responsible for blood clotting. That's all for today. See you on our next video about blood circulation. Thank you and God bless.